Last week, I got a chance to go to an event organized by Roger Hamilton uh, of Wealth Dynamics and everything related to that world. The event itself was called Entrepreneurs 5.0, and it spoke to Society 5.0, which is a concept that's come out of Japan around the next evolution of humans. You know, we've gone from a hunter-gatherer society to an agrarian society to the industrial age, the information age, and now we're coming on to something new. And that's society 5.0, as they say. I believe uh, one of the words that he used was the impact age, and that's the age that, that like, that's the phrasing that really works for me, so that's how I'm going to look at it. We're coming on to the age of, uh, of impact. And in the conversation, he was talking about some future technologies that were coming up and how we can leverage those technologies. And the technology he was talking about in particular was just the way that computers are run, from uh, binary computing to quantum computing. Now, I'll be honest, it was my first time hearing it, I, and I did a little bit of research by asking the person next to me, <laughs> like, what is he talking about? Uh, and we all did a, a share around it. But the, uh, the, idea, of, the idea of it like actually resonated with me really quickly. My understanding of this here, and I'll leave it to people in the comments to uh, share more, and I'll leave it to you to do more research on your own because I'm not here to be an expert on binary versus quantum computing. That what I'm here is to uh, extrapolate something to help you think about your world a little bit different and see it a little bit differently. What I got from it here is that our current computers think use uh, use bytes and those bytes are able to distill information using a binary system either zero or one true or false right and that's how they're able to take in information and make and make decisions uh and, and process from there they're now introducing something that's called quantum computing quantum computing still has those zero to one op, uh, those zero to one options but it also allows for a cloud and a, a, of of different possibilities the fact that it can be partially uh, zero or one and one at the same time, you know, and the way I, and again, this is not me being an expert on this here. That's not the point of it. The point of it that, that struck me, I was like, oh, this is, this is really interesting was the fact that it was moving from a system of there's either a yes or a no, a true or a false and either this or that. And it was bringing into the computing world, the gray area bringing into the computing world what I call multiple truths. Yes, this is true, and yes, that is true. Uh, and to have both of those things coexist. And what was interesting to me is like when I, when I started thinking about it from the lens of multiple truths, it made me think about us as humans and us as leaders. We are already quantum computers. We, our brains do this. We can hold multiple truths to be the word self-evident comes in. I think it's just like I'm going back to uh, like we hold these truths to be self-evident, you know, truths, multiple, <laughs> you know, it is possible to have multiple truths uh, exist at the same time. Uh, I, I was recently talking about vulnerability and, and in the conversation that, that came up there, uh, the person I was talking to called out that like one of the things that you do really, Nemo, is that you model that you can be both, you can have both vulnerability and joy. You can have both vulnerability and power. Multiple truths exist in simultaneously. Guess what? I can have vulnerability, power, and joy. Booyah, three right there. <laughs> and so can you, right? And it, those may not be your magic, that may not be your magic combination, and that's gonna move and, and grow with you depending on where you are. But the idea here of us being able to hold multiple truths is so fundamentally simple and at the same time so fundamental period because it feels that a lot of times when we uh when we're approaching different things uh, let's say our conversations out in the world come to who's right who's wrong how do i convince if you come around me and use the word convince you're going to see me take a step back because i'm like i don't know that I, I don't know who you think you are that you can convince me. And I'm not saying that I'm better than being convinced, but what I'm saying is that like, I don't need to be convinced. I wanna be transformed, step your game up. You know, like I wanna, I wanna go on this journey. I wanna evolve in my thinking. I don't need to be convinced. I wanna grow with you. I wanna grow with you and allow room for that, you know? And so this idea here that the, 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 the main area here that I'd love for you to focus on is where in your life are you bringing in binary thinking? Where in your life have you been been kind of um, just kind of settling for either or options, 
either or options when there's a whole array, a whole world, a whole cloud of different opportunities available for you, different options available. It's one of the things I love about my, my coaching because when I work with my clients, they, we typically find those either or binary decisions and we take it down to the quantum world. We get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And then we find out what's happening at its core. It might be we find out what's happening at its depth and what's the one thing that could that if you made a small tweak in will change everything and make both of those both of those decisions completely irrelevant or as easy as possible or an exponential. Or we might go in the other way and see like, what is this really about? What is your purpose? What are you being pulled to do? What is that other? What's that thing that's coming up for you? Or we just give you range. You know, the ability to say this and this can be true. That was one of the biggest realizations in, in my life. It was a total game changer for me when I realized that I didn't have to subs su subscribe to what everyone else and I, Actually, the word in my mind was succumb. I didn't have to succumb to everyone else's um, uh, mindset around depth and scale. You can either have depth or you can have scale. You can either have depth or you can have scale. And my thing is that, like, this is why I spend so much time in Rich Lipman's world. I saw that you can have both. You can be someone who engages in depth and has deep conversations with one individual and makes it meaningful and has a life-changing conversation in that way. And be able to do that in a way that has scale to it. Do it in a way that other people can experience it as well. It's the reason that if you go to my YouTube channel, I have conversations on there with me actually coaching people in one-on-one -on -one in group settings. Because in that way, I can get to a level of depth with each and every one of them, but you can also have scale there. You get a chance to see it. And they're like, you know, depending on when, when you watch this, this might have hundreds, thousands, if not millions of, of views on one single video. I'm gonna speak that out into existence right now, knowing that that is not the number, but it feels great to be in there. I'm gonna allow that to also be uh, a possibility in this quantum thinking. So as I bring this over to you and we bring this to a wrap here, I want you to think for yourself, where in your world right now might you be stuck in a binary thought, an either or, or trying to prove someone right, or trying to convince someone, right? Find an opportunity right now in your life where that might be taking place, and then take a step back Take a step out, take a step deeper, or take a step up and elevate yourself from the problem. And see, what's the quantum thinking? What's the, what's the cloud of solution? What multiple truths can be held at the same time such that they can all be held self, as self-evident truths? And we can go on and create from there. And then I'm gonna ask you as a leader, and you may not even consider yourself a leader, but I will tell you right now, if you're watching this, if this resonates with you, my friend, you are a leader because you, because people are following, whether or not you know it. How are you modeling a specific way of showing up in the world, a specific way of feeling what, what might be successful right now based on the lens of binary and quantum? based on the lens of one truth versus multiple truths. Ask yourself that question and find one instance in your life where you might be leading in that way. And just think about the impact of that if those who are following you only have two options in their mind. And see what possibilities might become available to you if you start modeling and leading from a place of holding multiple truths, of being able to demonstrate uh, a fullness, being able to demonstrate range, depth, and elevation. That's my invitation to you. Go ahead. I'd love to be in conversation with you about this here. So go ahead and leave a comment wherever you're watching this. I will, like, what I like to do is I go through, and if the comment is, is thoughtful, I typically respond back with some of my thoughts as well. Uh, I am now bringing out and creating space for us to explore this even further. Um, and so I engage people in conversations over in our Facebook group, which you can get over to by going to nemoashong.com slash tribe. nemoashong.com slash tribe. That's going to take you over to our, uh, our group where we are really, not even our group, we're taking to our tribe. Brings the tribe together so we can come together and start exploring these topics in a meaningful way as it applies to us. This is the game we are playing and we welcome you to it. So if you'd like to be in conversation, if you'd like to explore this further, and if you'd like to see how other people are thinking about this here in an environment where it's not just safe, but you must also be brave, 
then go over to nemoshong.com slash tribe and come hang out with the outliers, pioneers, mavericks, the change agents, the, uh, the movement leaders, the business leaders, the entrepreneurs, the visionary leaders, and the implementers. Like, come out here and be amongst the group of people who are out there actively changing their world wherever they are. Yeah, that feels good. Binary versus quantum. Allow yourself to just do the human thing and think in the quantum way. My name is Nemo Asham. I'm founder of Enjoyment. I am the leader of the World Joy Movement, and I lead outliers, pioneers, and mavericks everywhere. I move movement move leaders. That's what I do. I, I move movement leaders. And I invite you to continue this conversation with me. All right? <laughs> I look forward to what we create from here. Here's to being more you each and every day because you are a gift to your world. Game on.